Hello everyone, I'm James Hostetler, Lead Elder at Family Worship Center in Goshen, Indiana, the area that Earl and Rebecca are from. We're looking today at Psalm 34. The context for Psalm 34 is David has killed Goliath, he's now a commander in Saul's army, and he continues to win battles and has favor with God. The, the downside to all of that is Saul's gotten jealous, and so at this point Saul is trying to kill David, so David flees. And he flees to a neighboring kingdom. When he's there, there's men, the king's men from there recognize him as probably being David and kind of tell the story of what's going on. And so David is perceived as a threat. So David, overhearing that, pretends to be insane. And so he's before the king, and the king looks at him and says, This can't be David. You know, this man's insane. And so David is sent out from the king's presence at that point. After that, then he writes Psalm 34. And so it starts off with, I will extol the, Lord, extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. And as, as we just even with that beginning, one of the things as I was reading and, and looking at Psalm 34 this time around was, David's relationship with God, and it's very clear that um, David knew his God and had relationship with him. And you know, one of the things we talk about in our faith is, as Christians, is that it's relationship with God. It's not just religion. It's not just a God we serve, but it's a God who's pursued us and sought us and and done all these things that He can have restored relationship with us. And so as I was looking at this again, I was just reminded of David's deep uh, love and passion for the Lord. Verse 4, David says, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers him. And so we're in this context of having to flee two kings. And in the midst of that, David is saying, you know, I'm having troubles, but I see God's deliverance. When I sought the Lord, he answered me. In the midst of all these things, he delivered me from my fears. Verse 8, taste and see that the Lord is good. Now this is, this is such a special verse for me. And just continues to be so. And there's something there that just um, declares, again, in, in even a different sense that we typically see in Scripture. But this taste and see. So experience this God and discover for yourself that he is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his holy people. For those who fear him lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Verse 15, the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their cry. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil to blot out their name from the earth. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. And again, we see someone who has this relationship with God in the midst of struggles and, and strife. And he's saying, look, in the midst of that, I know that my God's eyes are on me. In the midst of that, I know his ears are attentive to me. In the midst of my struggles, the righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. And again, you can hear just the personal testimony and cry of, this has been my experience with God and in my brokenness, in these situations where I didn't know what to do, God has been close and he's saved. Verse 19, the righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones, even not one of them will be broken. Verse 22, the Lord will rescue his servants no one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. And so I've been saying, I was just struck at, at that, that relationship, how well David knew God and had experienced God in the midst of his life. And again, in this case, in the midst of his troubles. 
Now, when Earl asked me to do Psalm 34, I recognized when I got to the second verse that it was also, in, in, a, in a good way, a setup from God. So I've been struggling, if I may share, per, share personally here, um, with fatigue and, and a variety of symptoms since the beginning of January. You know, it's only was in the last well, number of weeks where I realized it has to be neurological, right? Just some of the things were going on thought it has to be brain related. And so, but no idea what was happening. And, and it could look and go a lot of different ways in terms of diagnosis. And so I'm reading, I will glory in the Lord, let the afflicted hear and rejoice. And it just struck me, I said, God, I know in the midst of, of studying this and looking at this, that you'll be speaking and are speaking to me. And so uh, Friday, I went and had an MRI. It was early in the morning. And when we got done, the nurse said, you can't leave the hospital. But of course, she's not allowed to diagnose issues. So I know I have a problem, but I don't know what it is. Um, and so we're waiting for the radiologist to come and, and to to give an official uh, diagnosis, if you will. And so I'm sitting there, and what I found was I was at peace. Now, it's not saying I didn't have some anxiety, because I did, but I was at peace. Um, you know, verse 4 says, I sought the Lord, and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. And, uh, and I was just discovering God in the midst of, of uncertainty, knowing there's a problem. Now it's been confirmed there's a problem, but not knowing what that looked like. And so I spent the rest of the day, um, switched different hospitals uh, to a different town because a neurosurgeon was from that area. So testing and realizing at one point that um, when they wouldn't let me eat, that it was actually a possibility of having emergency brain surgery that day. Um, and so it was just good for me then having looked at Psalm 34 and reflecting just to knowing that in the midst of brokenness, in the midst of life circumstances, right? When we look to God in the midst of our troubles, he's there with us. When we come as, um, verse six, when David says, this poor man called and the Lord heard him, he's identifying himself as the poor man and he's identifying himself in God's goodness in the midst of the troubles that are surrounding him. And, and for me, the, again, the verse that really blesses me, taste and see that the Lord is good. And just that aspect of know God, experience him, and what comes out of that is just the goodness of who he is. So my encouragement for all of us is taste and see in the midst of life that the Lord is good. Be blessed.